Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is statistical techniques. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and check out the introduction. You can look at the video description for links to any supporting information or a summary of the material. In the executive series, we have a standard agenda which consists of four main areas. You can see those in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our requirement, statistical techniques, comes directly from 820.250 and 1345 section 8.1. Statistical techniques in five words. When sampling, support with science. In order to clearly talk about statistical techniques, there's two terms that we have to understand first. Those terms are population and sample. Population means your entire data set. So in the case of manufacturing, if I'm looking at the population of a specific lot, I'm talking about every single product in that lot. If I'm talking about a batch, it's the entire batch. A sample is a small part of the actual population. So if I'm going back to the lot example, a sample would be anything less than the entire lot. The same on the batch side. A sample would be anything less than the entire batch. Now, if we are doing sampling, our sampling has to be based on a valid statistical rationale. We have to establish and maintain procedures that define all of the statistical sampling plans that we use throughout our manufacturing process. That includes sampling during verification and validation, incoming inspection, in-process inspection, final release inspection, any process controls, CAPAs, audits, all of those subsystems, you're going to do some level of sampling. Whatever sampling that is, it has to be based on valid statistics. How do I know this is working? Well, first, I have a procedure that defines my sampling plans. Second, if I document sampling plans in verification and validation protocols, those sampling plans are supported by a documented statistical rationale. If I'm doing data analysis, I analyze that data for normality before I start to do inferences and other types of analysis on the data. How do I know it's not working? Well, first, I just pick sample numbers, like three, like 30, like 15, whatever, without any statistical support. Second, I have no procedures outlining my statistical sampling plans and capturing those rationales. Third, if I document a sample size within a validation or a verification protocol, I don't support it with a statistical rationale. And then finally, I don't test for normality when I have an actual data set and I want to start to do some analysis on that data set. Now for your three bonus questions. What sample sizes do we normally use? Do we have a standard sample size that we use when we do verification and validation activities? Do we have any sample plans or sampling procedures that are defined? And then finally, when we're doing data analysis inside verification and validation, do we test our data sets for normality before we start looking at things like standard deviation, process capability, CPK, PPK? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.